Hi, thanks for joining me. Today we're going to take a look at the T-Motor Cine 55 Amp 8-in-1 8S ESC. Normally we've seen single ESCs or 4-in-1 ESCs. So what makes this one unique is that it's an 8-in-1 ESC. So it's basically two 4-in-1s put together on a single board. As far as I know, there aren't any other ESCs out there produced right now that, uh, that are 8-in-1s. So this is kind of a unique ESC. Well, just to be straight up with everybody, I'll let you know right at the beginning here that uh, I bought this ESC with my own money. This uh, was not given to me as a sample. I, uh, it really caught my interest. I was, I'm really excited to try a build with this, so I, uh, I paid for this with my own money. I was more than willing to uh, pay the hefty price for this one after uh, seeing how much it's going to simplify my builds. Oh, why don't we take a look in the box here and see what's included, and then I'll uh, cover some more of the description of this uh, really interesting ESC. Oh, it's an interesting way it's uh, presented inside the box. I haven't seen one packed quite like that. Wow, is that over some, uh, some beefy uh, wire that comes with it for the power tabs? That 10 gauge, yeah, 10 gauge, 10 gauge silicone wire. Uh, I believe it's 20 centimeters or 200 millimeters. Of oh, there's the uh, packet of all the included bits and pieces we'll take a look at in a second. I guess with the, the high cost of this ESC, uh, they've tried to, uh, make the presentation in the box and stuff a little, a little extra special. Okay, so some of the other stuff included here. I so have a couple of uh, T-Motor stickers. It's pretty standard for T-Motor stuff. And an inspection card, which you always get with, uh, with T-Motor parts. It comes with a whole bunch of these little rubber mounting gummies. And it comes with one plug that's just a, a direct connection between the Cine 55 ESC and the T-Motor F7 Pro full function flight controller. Uh, I'll talk more about this connecting these two together a little bit later in the video. Uh, it also comes with another one that's uh, sort of D-pinned, so you can put the pins together if you want to connect it differently to a different flight controller. It includes the, uh, the connectors and one to put together yourself. And two, two 50 volt, 680 microfarad Rubicon uh, capacitors. It's rated for a constant current of 55 amps and a peak current of 65 amps. And this is a fairly large ESC at a size of 95.2 millimeters long by 51 millimeters wide or 53 millimeters wide at the power tabs and 8.2 millimeters thick. The total weight of this ESC is 65 grams and it can operate at a PWM frequency of 16 to 128 kilohertz. The standard 30.5 by 30.5 millimeter mounting makes it easy to mount without any modification to a frame, as long as there is enough room between standoffs and other components to fit the large footprint of this ESC. Let's go over a few more details about the design, and then I'll talk to you about why I think this ESC is definitely something to be considered when putting together an octocopter build. Taking a closer look here, the entire top and bottom of the ESC is a huge matte black heatsink to ensure ample heat dissipation for the 48 full-size MOSFETs underneath. It's packed full of capacitance with its 118 ceramic SMD capacitors on board along with two locations for mounting both of the included external 50 volt, 680 microfarad capacitors. When you start to look at how this ESC is installed and wired up to the rest of the build, this is where it really starts to stand out from the rest and, and make a lot of sense. I'm currently working on an octocopter frame that I plan on releasing in the future, and I've done several different builds with it. And I can say from, from doing those builds, 
that uh, I'm honestly excited to try uh, doing my next build using this ESC because of how much it's going to simplify the whole process. Let's start off with how ESCs and flight controllers are normally connected in an octocopter. So normally when connecting two four-in-one ESCs, you need to run two wiring harnesses uh, to the flight controller. Most of the time, one of them is going to have a place to plug in on the flight controller, and then the second one is going to have to be uh, soldered directly to pads, because 99% of flight controllers only have one pinout connector for ESCs. Now, when you use this 8-in-1 ESC with this T-Motor F7 Pro flight controller, The wiring process for flight controller to ESC is uh, greatly simplified with this pair. One side to the flight controller. It's the right way around. The other side to your ESC. And there you go. That's it. That's eight ESCs wired up to your flight controller. Done. No soldering. It, uh, it doesn't get any easier than that. And the other spot this ESC really shines is in, in the power connection. So with a typical octocopter build with two four-in-one ESCs, you require a power distribution board to run your battery power to and then that power distribution board separates out power to both of the two four-in-one ESCs. So you require this power distribution board to go from your battery and split the battery's power to the two four-in-one ESCs that you're using. Now using this Cine 55 eight-in-one ESC, all you do is attach your battery to these two power tabs and that's it. No power distribution board. You don't, even, you don't even need a power distribution board in the build at all for an octocopter when you're using this. Power goes in, gets split out to all eight of the ESCs. No bother with worrying about wiring up separate foreign ones. So the way this wires up directly with one plug to the flight controller, provides power to the flight controller, and the flight controller can take 8S voltage and steps it down to a 5 volt and 10 volt regulator. So again, there's, there's no need for a power distribution board. Between the two of these, you've got all the power distribution you need, as well as a 5 volt and 10 volt regulator to run all your electronics. This truly simplifies uh, any octocopter build. So my last octocopter build, the one I'm currently flying, has a flight controller, two four-in-one ESCs, and a power distribution board that need to all be connected together. This one is going to have a flight controller and an ESC. And this is where it comes to, I think, pretty much the only complaint I have about this ESC. After all the work of making this beautiful eight-in-one and, and getting rid of the need for a power distribution board, they've even got the two capacitor spots, one on each side. All they had to do was take two more power tabs and put them on this side with these other capacitor spots. I mean, they've already got the copper traces for the, the positive and negative going right there. You can, they must, right? Because the cap hooks up to them. So all they had to do was break out two more tabs here, and then you could use dual batteries with no need for a power distribution board or like altering a wiring harness or anything. You just have an XT60, another XT60, plug in two batteries. Now you've got tons of amp handling power. So that is, that is my only complaint about this ESC is that I wish they'd, they'd broken out two more power tabs on this side. That would have really made a difference for uh, anybody flying with a dual battery setup. Overall, I, I think this makes a, a really amazing looking combination for, uh, for an octocopter build. I'm, I'm pretty excited and looking forward to uh, how much this is going to simplify my next build. I'm also excited about how uh, 
how it's going to make the build look. This is a, a pretty amazing looking ESC. There's, uh, there's definitely a shine over top of these, the uh, pinout description here. That makes it look like it's conformal coded. But then just at the sides here, it doesn't look like it. So I'm wondering if I'm going to have to maybe ask uh, contact T-Motor and find out from them. I'm wondering if it is conformal coded, but they've just uh, just left out the conformal coding along these edges to make to make wiring this up uh, easier. And then you just conformal coat this part yourself afterwards. I can definitely see the uh, silicone heat transfer adhesive there connecting the MOSFETs to the heat sink. I guess that's another thing we should talk about here is the price of this ESC and how that works out when comparing it to others. It's uh, fairly expensive with a price tag of $269 US. But when you start to think about it a little bit more, it, it, that price really does make sense. Looking at the T-Motor uh, F55 Pro 2, a, you know, one of T-Motor's uh, best 4-in-1 ESCs, the sale price on that is $99, let's say $100 US to simplify things. So for two 4-in-1s, you're going to pay $200 US which leaves only a $69 difference between this and buying two foreign ones. And then when you think about the fact that you can skip the power distribution board, which you might pay another $20 for, that leaves this only costing an extra, about an extra $50 uh, more than, than going with two foreign ones and a power distribution board. And then when you also consider that this is an 8S rated ESC, to go for uh, to go from a 6s to an 8s rated 4-in-1 ESC, you're usually going up a little bit more in price, and so I, I think this this pretty much evens out. If you were going to buy two 8s 4-in-1s and a power distribution board, you're you're not going to pay really too much less than than you would for this thing. And I'm sure some people are wondering, yeah, but it's an eight and one. Like, what if you blow one ESC? You're gonna throw the whole thing out and replace it? Well, myself, I've been flying long range with four and one ESCs for several years now. And uh, I've, I've never blown an ESC. Now, this is partly because I use really good quality, um, overrated, ESCs, so you know, I only pull 25 to 30 amps from each motor, usually at the most. Uh, but I use an ESC that's rated for 55 amps per motor. So that that overhead room really helps to ensure that the ESC is not going to fail on you. And T Motor is definitely known for making good, high quality, durable ESCs. So I I wouldn't recommend this for doing some kind of like just crazy freestyle bashing just for the fun of it. Yeah, probably don't buy an eight and one ESC. But if you're building an octocopter for any kind of a, a cine platform where you plan on for carrying a larger cine camera or multiple GoPros, then this this ESC really makes sense. But myself, I'm going to be doing uh, short to mid range cinematic type stuff with this octocopter and uh, Probably also going to do a little bit of mountain diving and long range with it. So I, uh, I think this ESC is going to be the perfect choice. In a little while, I'm going to be doing a build with this and posting that build video to YouTube. So if you're interested in catching that, hit the subscribe button and uh, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.